chapter 27. Now when morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. So this morning was the morning of Thursday morning. The Our society, we have Good Friday, and most people assume he was killed on Friday because they know it was the preparation day for the Sabbath, which is Saturday. But the preparation day for the f Sabbath, the high Sabbath, which was the first day of the uh, Passover feast, was a different day. So Friday was the Passover feast. Saturday was the weekly Sabbath. So now we're at Thursday morning when he is being tried. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him up to Pilate the governor. Then Judas, who betrayed him, and when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed innocent blood. So this is what makes me think that Judas intended to turn Jesus over, but he did not intend for them to convict him. Uh, because it says when he saw that he was condemned. So... I think it didn't go the way Judas thought it was going to go. But they said, What is that to us? See thou to it. And he cast down the pieces of silver into the sanctuary and departed. And he went away and hanged himself. So the chief priest uh, and the leaders of the Jews, they all along, their whole intent was to kill Jesus. Uh, all they needed was to lay hands on him uh, in a time that wouldn't cause an uproar, which I st still, I guess... <laughs> the day before the feast, uh, they thought would not be as big a deal as during the feast. And the chief priest took the pieces of silver and said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is the price of blood. And they took counsel. So they're concerned about what is lawful while they're killing their own Messiah. And bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was priced, whom certain of the children of Israel did price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. So just continual fulfillment of prophecy. Jeremiah even talked about how they would use this, this money to buy a potter's field. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then saith Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he gave him no answer, not even to one word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast the governor was wont to release unto the multitude one prisoner, whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner, called Barabbas. When therefore they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him up. And while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that righteous man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. But the governor answered and said unto them, Which of the two will ye that I release unto you? And they said, so I imagine even Pilate was under the assumption that if he presented either Jesus, who was a peaceful religious man, versus Barabbas, who was probably an evil murderer, that certainly the people would say, release the peaceful man and not the murderer. Um, you know, taking the advice of his wife, who had dreams, saying that they should not... Uh, condemn Jesus but the people were intent to crucify Jesus said Barabbas Pilate saith unto them what then shall I do unto Jesus who is called Christ they all said that is he said what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah your Savior so he Pilate says what would you have me do with your Savior say let him be crucified they didn't want a Savior they didn't want a Messiah or they didn't think he was the right one. And he said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out exceedingly, saying, Let him be crucified.
So when Pilate saw that he prevailed nothing, but rather that a tumult was arising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this righteous man. See ye to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. And that's exactly what happened. The blame for the crucifixion of Jesus falls on the Jews. They even said, we will accept the penalty of his blood. And that's what happened. The Jews lost favor in God's eyes and all nations uh, will be blessed through Jesus and no longer would it come through the Jewish nation. Then released he unto them Barabbas, but Jesus he scourged and delivered to be crucified. Now that's just one word, but the scourging uh, almost killed him. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered unto him the whole band. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And they plaited a crown of thorns and put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand. And they kneeled down before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat upon him, and took the reed and smote him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took off from him the robe, and put on him his garments, and led him away to crucify him. And that was the, uh, the soldiers of the governor. Uh, I guess that was, was doing all this beating uh, and mocking and spitting. And they had no idea who he was or what he had done or anything. They, I guess that was just their job to beat prisoners. Uh, what kind of job would that be? Not a very good one. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to go with them, that he might bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place... The reason Jesus needed someone to bear his cross is because he had been beaten so severely he could barely walk and certainly care, struggled carrying his own cross. It's called Golgotha, that is to say, the place of a skull. They gave him wine to drink mingled with gall, and when he had tasted it, he would not drink. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments among them, casting lots, and they sat and watched him there. And they set up over his head his accusation, written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then are there crucified with him two robbers, one on the right hand and one on the left. So... His accusation was that he was king of the Jews, uh, which would be in opposition to the Roman king or Roman Caesar. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou art the Son of God, come down from the cross. So people think that they can come up with their own ways for God to justify who he is. Uh, people often think that their way is the best way. And completely unfamiliar with uh, the scriptures and God's word, they would say, well, if you would come down from the cross, if you perform a miracle the way I suggest you do it right now, then I'll believe. But that's not the way it works. In like manner also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. So they had seen Jesus heal so many people and cast out demons uh, and forgive sins. And I don't think they were kidding when they said he saved others. I think they knew that he had saved others, that he had healed others. But yet... They assume that even though they've seen him heal multitudes of people, that he can't heal himself. I mean, how could they possibly believe that? He is the king of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe on him. You see, they're looking for a physical, earthly king uh, and who will do what they want him to do. Let him come down from the cross, and we will believe on him. He trusteth on God. Let him deliver him now if he desires. So the only reason to trust in God is if God delivers you from all the things that you don't like. This is a mindset that people have today that I will only believe in God if he lets good things happen to me only. And the good things need to be the things that I think are good, not what he thinks are good. Because discipline is never good in people's eyes. But people, this is where... 
the will of man uh, is selfish uh, and self-seeking and ungodly. That's why we need to give up our will and seek his will and completely surrender our will to him. Desireth him, for he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers also that were crucified with him cast upon him the same reproach. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. So this is Thursday, and the sixth hour would be noon, because it started at 6 a.m. The sixth hour would be 12 noon, and it was dark from 12 noon to the 3 p.m. And uh, an eclipse wouldn't last that long. Uh, we just had an eclipse pass through Nashville. Uh, and it was only a minute or two, a couple minutes. But uh, it was dark for three hours. Could have been some heavy clouds. Uh, could have been something else. But certainly it was abnormal right in the middle of the day for it to be dark for three hours. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood there, and that's an interesting uh, phrase, and I don't know that I can understand it or explain it. Uh, for did God forsaken Jesus? In a way, I say certainly not. God never forsakes uh, his people. Uh, but did he feel forsaken? Uh, did he take on the sins of the world? Yes. Uh, and maybe from that sense, uh, he was forsaken that he was allowed to take on the sins of the world in the darkest hour. There, when they heard it, said, This man calleth Elijah. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. And the rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elijah cometh to save him. And Jesus cried with Elijah. So I guess they thought he was praying to Elijah to come save him. Oh. With a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake. And the So Jesus cried with a loud voice, and then he died. He yielded his spirit, and the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Now, I guess someone uh, had to be in there to see that, or maybe there was some way they could evidence that it was torn from top to bottom. But... Uh, the indication here is that no man could have torn the veil in this way. And the veil separated the holy place from the most holy place. So now it was the most holy place was not blocked off, but Jesus had made the most holy place accessible to all people by tearing the veil. The rocks were rent, and the tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints that had fallen asleep were raised. So... Dead bodies were raised out of the graves. Earth, there were earthquakes. There was darkness for three hours. Uh, many people would have witnessed these miraculous events and been fearful. And coming forth out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now the... Hmm. Coming forth out of the tombs after his resurrection... That's interesting. I, I guess I hadn't noticed this. So the dead bodies, it's possible they didn't come out of the tombs until after Jesus was resurrected, which would make Jesus uh, the first fruits of the resurrection because he was raised first and then the other dead bodies were raised. Now, there were examples, even Matthew, of a couple people that were dead and brought back to life. Uh, they had not been buried, but uh, well, I don't know, maybe they were. But anyway, Jesus was resurrected on the first day of the week, which would have also been the feast day of uh, the wave offering or the uh, first fruits centurion and they that were with him watching jesus when they saw the earthquake and the things that were done feared exceedingly saying truly this was the son of god 
And many women were there beholding from afar, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joses, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. And when even was come, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded it to be given up. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary, sitting over against the sepulchre. Now on the morrow, which is the day after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees were gathered together unto Pilate. So on the next day, which is the day after the preparation, which would be the day of the Passover feast, which would be the preparation day for the weekly Sabbath, but the first preparation day was for the uh, Passover saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive, After three days I rise again. Command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest haply his disciples come and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, and the last error will be worse than the first. So even uh, the chief priests and Pharisees understood that Jesus predicted his resurrection in three days. So they wanted to guard against that. It almost seems like the chief priests and Pharisees understood what Jesus said better than his own disciples did because his own disciples uh, didn't believe that he was resurrected on the third day as he said. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a guard. Go, make it as sure as ye can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone, the guard being with them. So they made sure that no one could tamper with the tomb by sealing it and rolling in, I guess, sealing the stone and guarding it so nobody would come and uh, tamper with it. That's Matthew 27, and we will continue our Bible studies together.